11, right? Okay. Now let's go to power consumption. This one we did that in the um, assignment one already, right? So let's say again, right? So if I have a switching, my output voltage go high, VDD. And then later you go low, become zero. How does the energy consume, right? We actually, you know already, when I go from low, low to high, I mean output, right? What happened? The battery deliver CV square, okay? With what? Half of the CV square store in the cap, right? And then half of the CV square is just joule heating. It means we lose the energy in our EQP, in the P resistor. And then when you go from high to low, we finish one switching, right? Low to high, high to low battery deliver nothing, right? Because it's, there's no current going, uh, uh, going uh, into leaving the battery because we turn the PMOS off, right? At this stage, PMOS is off, right? Output from high to low. It means input from low to high. But what happened? Then at this time you discharge everything, you also get nothing store in the capacitor everything go back to the original state but half of them half cv square which come from the capacitor they heat up the end resistor right so it completes a cycle the capacitor get nothing the power lose cv square and all of them heat up in the pmos and nmos becomes the heat Right? Is this clear? Then what is the power dissipation? Power dissipation is talking about the energy for each cycle times the switching frequency, right? Which is equal to CV square times F. And we only need to look at one of them. Because if you go to one, you need to go back to zero and then so then you can go to one again, right? So CV square times F zero to one. And of course, this is also the frequency is also equal to one over the period, right? So this is an equation we did not derive before. Some of you already know, but basically the energy dynamic power consumption is CV square times F. And that's why if you increase the voltage, by two times, your power consumption increased by four times. You decrease it by two times, your power consumption become 25%. That is a big deal, right? Your iPhone need to charge every day and certainly only every four days if you are able to reduce the voltage by half. Right, so this V is very important. Any questions? Let's take an example, right? For example, if the loading is six femtofarad and then the voltage is 2.5 right this is the clock four gigahertz we don't look at the clock we only look at the frequency when you go from zero to one now that is the main point so for some logic they don't switch often right later you will find that you you want to design it so that it don't keep switching Sometimes you get the same result, but then you somehow you want to have a glitch or in between that actually wastes your energy, right? So what is the power consumption? Can someone tell me? Let me write down the equation, right? This is the equation I just showed you. CV squared times the frequency, it, grow, it goes from zero to one. What is C? Six femtofarad. What is V? 2.5 volt square, right? V squared. What is F from zero to one? Can someone tell me based on this figure, what is F from zero to one? What is the clock frequency? Four gigahertz. Four gigahertz. 
And then what is the frequency the signal will change from zero to one? Based one gigahertz. On one gigahertz. Yeah. Did, did you say that? 16? Yeah, I said that. Okay. One gigahertz. One gigahertz. Now, uh, Omid, you're almost right, but you go to the wrong direction because where well, I'm asking the frequency, not the period. Period is four times, right? But in terms of frequency, it is one fourth, right? Because the period, you are right, it is four times. So it becomes this, okay? So the power consumption, if you plug in, it is 37.5 microvolt. Is this okay? Now, what if I reduce the voltage VDD from 2.5 to one? Right, you can calculate it again, but you can also use what I just told you because it reduced by 2.5 times. So it will be 2.5 divided by one square. That becomes six microwatt, much smaller. Okay. So you see that how can we reduce the dynamic power, right? You can reduce VDD, but if you reduce VDD, of course, then it means the frequency will reduce. This is bad, right? This is the, let's call it cons, right? And then of course, less power consumption which is the cons, but still, I mean the pros, but still the problem is you actually reduce the noise margin. That is the cons. Okay. Now here shows you something. I have a two stage amplifier, right? Actually, I want to ask you, but I tell you the answer already. This is two stage, right? Why be careful, right? In the exam, people, some people will say it is free, but no, one, two, okay? Although you have one, two, looks like free, but this is the output of the second stage, right? So now uh, the question is, I want to maximize the speed. What is the, uh, depends on the fan out, right? There is a point that I can maximize the speed. And if you remember, we want to have the minimum is that we want to have F equal to this one. We want to have F stage to have the same fan out, right? So for example, if I only have one fan out, I mean, if the total fan out is one, then I have this, right? And then this, and then if I total fail is two, I have this one. Then I have a minimum stage. So in order to get the same, uh, if I tell you a performance, I say that I want to uh, have this one delayed within a certain time. Then what, what do you need? What you need is, is that you have, uh, there, there will be a certain uh, fan out that will minimize the delay, right? And this fan out is going to be, for example, is about square root two. This is about square root five. This is about square root 10. I think I typed the wrong thing. What, what I'm trying to say is this. I have two stage. So I need F because this is one, this is F, right? The size equals to C external divided by F so that F equal to square root of C external, which is equal to square root of capital F, right? This is F. F is C external divided by this one. I call it one, right? The size is one. So square root of F is just equal to C external. So depends on this size, 
right? I might need different uh, f, small f, right? So this one gives me the faster speed. But on the other hand, in terms of energy, these are actually smaller than square root two, smaller than square root five. So you see that even you have the minimal delay, but it might not give you the minimal energy consumption. That is the message I want to say. Minimum delay does not mean minimum energy. Correct. Excellent. Okay. Correct. Yeah. energy is related to the capacitance and the voltage supply. Yes. Okay, so there's another leakage, uh, energy consumption, which is called a, a direct current, right? When you switch from zero to one, there is a period. This period during which both PMOS and and MOS. Oh, I think I have problem with this now. Hold on. Both PMOS and MOS are on. So you have some so-called short circuit current, and this is the so-called short circuit current. Okay. And we call this one TSC. So how much energy do we waste? At this time, again, you have VDD times I, but I is the so-called I peak, right? TSC is actually the time, right? So you have the I peak, but it's a triangle, right? And then you times the TSC. And for each cycle, you have two, right? to each cycle, right? Here is because it's a triangle, right? So do you see that we have VDD current going from top to bottom, and then you have a spike. And so current times the voltage is the power consumption. So as a result, you get VDD I peak TSC. Okay, so the power consumption is just the energy VDD IP TSC times the frequency, you go from one to zero, just like the dynamic power. And this is the so-called direct current, or you can call it short circuit current. Is this okay? okay so this is another power consumption, right? And this is particular a problem if actually your output goes very fast. Because when your output goes very fast, there will be a time that when my input is still not high enough, for example, I'm still at zero, or maybe let's say 0 0.5, right? I go from zero to 0 0.5 to VDD. Let's say I go from VDD divided by two to VDD. And this one is already at zero, VDD to zero. Maybe you have a situation like this. Input is here, output is here, right? So at this time, the PMOS is still on at the blue one. Then you are going to have the current going from VDD to here, and then you will have power consumption due to this switching loss. A uh, loss switching loss, this direct current, okay? But if your output go up slowly, then you don't have this problem because you already reach VDD, you turn off the PMOS already while the output is still at VDD. Okay, uh, I think I overrun, I will just stop here, but the rest should be quick next time I can cover quickly. Okay, any questions?